Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, where we respond to real viewers' questions. We do not make these things up, even mm -hmm. during the summer drought, folks. Temptation may come calling, but we don't answer the door. And we answer questions on everything from history to culture to economic theory, all those things that matter to us in our effort to live properly together as members of a community. Mm -hmm. And now Jeff sent a question that had to do with uh, the difference between sin and a crime. And he's asking essentially, could we ever get to a point where we stop treating sin as crime? He's thinking, I think, particularly in this modern world about the politically correct, some people call this religion sometimes, that put certain things that should not be crimes, like for instance, offending someone with a bad joke, have now become almost crimes. And, and could we ever get past that point? It's an excellent question. And the reference to political correctness reminds us that as William Shatner's character says in Airplane 2, irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. That this would be coming from the left of all people is odd because to me the fundamental distinction here between sin and crime, and obviously in that sense yes I'm accepting the premise of the question in order to answer it, that a crime is something that through force or fraud deprives somebody of a natural right in this world. A sin is some way of behaving wrongly toward God or the universe that diminishes your prospects for happiness now and in the future life if there is one. And that's a, this libertarian analysis and I describe myself as being libertarian on policy and conservative on metaphysics because I do not believe it is the job of the state to punish things that merely harm you. That the and I, I take very seriously the, the biblical incident where Christ is being taunted and trying to, they're trying to get him to commit some fatal blunder and they ask him if it's legal to pay taxes. He says, bring me a coin. And it says, whose image do you see on it? And they say Caesar's. And he says, then render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. And criminal justice, which is the state using force to constrain your conduct or punish it, is Caesar's. It is subordinate to those things that are God's, but it has a subordinate dignity and proper realm. And that is precisely the suppression of force and fraud, including defense of the realm. It's strange how libertarians get this so well domestically and then very often seem very confused in foreign affairs that it's not good enough to have your government not taking away your rights if some other government is taking away your government and your rights along with them. But on these grounds, you see, I would not punish blasphemy. I do not think people should go around swearing. I think it is degrading. And I suspect, depending, you know, the vocabulary may affect the extent of it, but it is an affront to God as well. It's bad for you. It's bad for your relationship with the Almighty. But it doesn't hurt me, uh, provided, of course, and this is an important provided in these circumstances, I'm allowed to shun you if I don't like it. If you come into my store and you are throwing certain words around with reckless abandon, I have every right to tell you to get out. And if these words are scatological, if they are sexual, if they are religious. I am perfectly at liberty to say, no, I will not have you as a customer. And I don't want to hear that your religious beliefs, such as they are, say it's okay to take the name of the Lord in vain. It's not about you. It's about me. But that's a private matter. And if you look into the past, you'd find that most efforts to punish sin would come from what we now think is conservatives, including banning gambling on Sunday banning homosexuality, um, banning blasphemy. Though it should be noted that these things come much more strongly out of the Puritan strand, which has given rise, having been secularized, to political correctness. I mean, it comes in the United States, comes much more out of New England than it does out of the South. But on the whole, I think it's fair to say that if you talk about restrictions on people's behavior with, that don't have anything to do with force or fraud, these would have been coming more from the right. And there's an interesting line from David Brooks. He's a very thoughtful commentator on the state of affairs in the world. He's a, a liberal who, well, would it be kind or unkind to say he's a liberal who knows he's insane. But at one <laughs> point, in deploring the state of American culture, he talked about the economic individualism of the right, which he thinks has created a kind of greed is good mentality, and the moral individualism of the left, which means that we have no standards, we cannot hold communities together. You know, children are abandoned in a world that makes no sense with adults who don't have commitments, all this kind of stuff. And I think that, you know, by and large, it's fair to say the right does not want restrictions on economic freedom and the left does not want restrictions on just letting it all hang out. And yet, and this is why irony is so ironic, we come back to a point where it's the left 
through political correctness, who are trying to control what we can say and do, who we can associate with, what kind of language we can use. You know, don't call somebody fat, say person of size. Whereas my view is I'm perfectly free to call someone fat and other people, fat or not, or sizable or not, are free to tell me to go jump in the lake because they don't like my manners. And if I go around indiscriminately calling people fat, I have bad manners and I should be shunned. But I shouldn't be charged with a hate crime. This is not Caesar's. And so I would argue that the real logic of what I think of it as authentic conservatism, especially if it's grounded in the Judeo-Christian tradition, ought to regard blasphemy and gambling and things of that sort profaning the Sabbath as problems between you and God that don't involve Caesar. And the left, which seems on the surface to be so devoted to personal freedom and lifestyles, ought to defend your right to have the lifestyle of your choice. So theoretically, everybody should favor this, but in practice, nobody does. Or virtually nobody. I mean, I do. I think the, the person who asked the question does. And uh, there, and you do get an argument. This one comes, in, in fact, from both right and left about, say, pornography. That pornography is not a victimless crime, which is another way of saying a sin. You know, if you believe force and fraud are the key elements of crime, then things that don't involve them are not really crimes at all. But there's an argument that somehow pornography is akin to pollution, and that just as you can't foul the air, so you can't foul the moral atmosphere either. And then on the left, somehow, that certain kinds of pornography, because they cause people to behave in ways that are offensive, demeaning, and even violent toward women, children, and any kind of intimate partner you might have, therefore they do involve force. But that, it seems to me, is too great a leap. And again, I'm not defending pornography here. Far from it. It is, as G.K. Chesterton said, a thing to be stamped on with one's heel. But I am saying the connection between it and force and fraud is not sufficiently close that it is the province of Caesar. If you act upon the kind of impulses that pornography causes in ways that lead you to commit a crime against somebody, you should be punished, but for the crime. So Walter Raleigh, you know, 500 years ago, said it is not the province of the law to inquire into men's thoughts. So I think we really ought to get back to this much more restricted definition of what belongs to Caesar. But in doing so, we should not be saying the other things don't matter. We are saying, in fact, that Caesar's realm, though important, is subordinate. But you must seek your own salvation in fear and trembling, whether you believe in God or not. You must navigate the universe morally with your own compass, adjusting your own sail. It's when you crash into somebody else's boat that the authorities should come for you. Mm -hmm. So we have to govern ourselves before we seek to govern others. Wish did I, I just put that. it That's very a, nicely? You did indeed. All oh, right, I, I win. Said that alternate. Uh huh. Well, I did, and I win. Thanks for that, folks. If you want to play along, the URL on your screen will take you to a page where every detail is explained. Thanks, and see you next time.